Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome to another episode of the Mo Show podcast. Tonight I have Miss Nada Hariri. Nada has shifted career a bunch of times. Six years ago, she landed on a profession that was unique to the region, being a divorce coach. I didn't know any of them existed in our region. She was one of the first in the Middle East. <laughs> Nada Hariri, thank you so much for coming on the show to talk to me about your journey. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Thank you for having me. I'm delighted. My pleasure. I'm just going to get your mic a little closer because your voice is so soft spoken. <laughs> the perfect therapist. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess the only place to start is what pulled you into the business? or the industry, if you want to call it that, or let's just say in becoming a divorce coach, what called you into that? At the beginning, I was just hesitant because it's such a new niche in, in the society and how I'm going to introduce it. It's, it's a little bit hard. That, then I felt that I'm sure there are people who are going to appreciate having me in their path while they're going through this. And this is where I get now, six years into this, field i heard lots of appreciation lots of people that telling me we can't imagine how how would we go through this without having you with us so what you do is you deal with people post the fact or post the event of a marriage ending mm -hmm. they come to you so that you can help them go through life yeah. as a new divorcee um, the thing is that we get our training into helping people how to use that divorce as a tool. It's not the end of their life. It's a turning point or it's a, it's a transition. So how are they going to navigate it? Um, because there are lots of changes that can happen in their life. So we do help them to navigate those changes in their best self. You know, sometimes when you go through a tough time, losing and, and grieving upon something, you're not in your best self and, and you're acting in a way that is not representing you. And I see this in divorce. People become their their worst version and they do things they, they might regret in the future, making decisions, uh, not following some agreements with their spouses and do things out of, let me say, hurt ego or yeah that's what it is yeah so how pride, they need pride yes Karama. yes so they need someone to just hold them from their hand and tell them i know what you feel but there is there is um a destination where you can go through it and while you're going through that journey you can be in your best self you can focus on your priorities you can still uh, be responsible father or mother you can still do your duties you can you're a good citizen your, your family needs you your friends your children so it's very important to have someone who can make them grounded and and um, help them avoid some of pitfall for uh, mistakes yeah. that mistakes that we see lots of mistakes and with people that go through divorce so most of them um, let me say my way or the highway, this is one of the huge mistakes. Um, getting into a new relationship so fast because we don't want to feel the loneliness. Um, yeah, kind of these things. Asking lots of people who are not um, specified in, in these areas. So asking friends, asking my sister, asking my brother, and getting everyone intrud intruded in that. And everyone has a say, you know. It, it's not necessarily in your in your best um, um, benefit. Yeah. yeah. So after your divorce, that's when you felt, obviously, it, it must have been one of the most challenging times yeah. for you in your life. Yes. Am I right in guessing that the reason why you became a divorce coach is because you didn't want anyone to go through the level of hurt that you went through? Um, let me not say at the level of hurt as much as the level of help I got. I wanted to provide that. I felt how much is getting that help is helped me to become a good mother, 
a better mom to my children. Um, I've never, you know, I've never um, took the divorce as a stigma or something shaming me. I know it was, it, I felt it's a failure and it is actually. Divorce, you can, you can consider divorce as a kind of a failure, but I needed to learn from that experience. I needed to reflect on what happened because I want to live. I want to get in a new relationship one day. I, I, I want to get, uh, I, I want to learn from that um, experience, the way I can become a better person. So yes, um, it's not out of hurt. Of course, I can feel the hurt. Of course, now when I work with people, I know what do they mean when they say um, specific emotions and, and when they express it, I know. And maybe that's what made me, you know, authentic. And people feel that they trust me easily and they feel that I'm so understanding to their situation. Uh, you mentioned failure. Mm -hmm. And that's a word that when I hear of it, I, I, I always pause because it means a lot to me mm -hmm. because I'm very familiar with it. Do you feel that in your line of work, a lot of people or there are couples out there who remain in a relationship because they don't want to face the fact of failing? Yeah. Is, is that something that's that's out there? Is that a, like a, a, a fact of society, let's say? Yeah. People think that if marriage lasts for a long time, it means it is successful. Not necessarily. There are lots of marriage that um, last for 30, 40 years, but they are just lasting. There's no relationship in there. And there are relationships that has been expired after a few years. And out of there, they were able to build up a good and healthy relationship because out of that experience, out of the lessons they've learned from that one. In our mother's generation, mm -hmm. the divorce rates were very low. Mm -hmm. We're talking 30, 40 years ago. Yes. S Saudi Arabia, 70, 80. Yes. Maybe 90s. Now everything's changed. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of questions here. <laughs> what caused the change? And do you see a world where we can go back to the way things were in terms of low divorce rate? Let's start with the first question. Mm -hmm. Why do you feel there was a change in the massive spike in the divorce rates? Well, Muhammad, actually, there are lots of reasons. And, and, you know, some of them are just valid. Some of them are becoming like you know people now accusing the young generation that divorce is a trend and divorce is easy and everyone can do divorce now and and they they let me say they judge the young generation that they are not patient enough uh, but this is not the truth from my practice i can say this is not the truth i can say that 30 years ago divorce was difficult it was stigma. There are lots of shame uh, associated with divorce. That's why no one will go through there unless, unless it's a surviving mechanism. There's violence. There's something like you cannot continue in that marriage. And actually, this is this, the, only, the, the very reason why the divorces in the last 30 years were very nasty, ugly, dramatic because it happened between partners, one of them actually very villain, vicious, you know? And that's why they don't know the, the um, they don't know what is amicable divorce or healthy divorce. They have, they've never maybe heard about it. It's very rare cases. Nowadays, people don't wait for violence to get divorced. They don't wait to that extent and, and to hate each other to get divorced. I, I have couples who decided to take divorce because they have different values, because they need different um, things in their life and, and their paths are just going apart. Um, although they are still respecting each other, sometimes there are still some uh, emotions 
it's not that uh, it, it it's not gone mm. it's there so there's a timing element to this yes if you overstay on a timeline basis yeah that could lead in the divorce being way uglier than it would be if you managed yes. to exit at the yes. at a better time yes so we have something we call it five r's in relationships so we you sometimes that people that they don't feel they're getting along, they start with something we call resistance. Something uncomfortable happened or something they don't like. But if they don't speak about that, they go to the 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 uh, the other level of that. It's called uh, resentment. So in that resentment, you start to store that resentment layers upon layers. You reach to a level where we call it rejection. So when rejection happens, actually, this is the best time to get divorced. If you wait, you feel the rejection. You don't like that spouse anymore. You don't want to spend time with him or her. Um, you're avoiding them. You're just living your life as if they are not there. You go to the other level, which we called resignation. So you don't feel any respect to your relationship anymore. You can do things like... And you know, here sometimes where the betrayal starts and, and uh, the ugly uh, talk about each other. And yeah, it's, it's really bad. Yet there are some people don't take the dis divorce decision here. So they go to the last level where we call it the repression. What happened there? It's like an explosion. They go to court. They started to torture each other. Um, uh, someone can see the children, someone is um, acting very manipulative. It goes there because they didn't leave in the right time. They thought we need to uh, save the marriage, we need to do something. And you know, even about couple therapy, when people go to um, marriage therapy, actually it didn't work when they are reaching the last two levels. It's not working. People think that People here think that they need to go to couple therapy when the things are very bad in their marriage and they need to do the last step. This is, doesn't have to be the last step. This has to be the first step, actually. If it's the last step, you won't do anything. You will go there just in, in, in the, uh, I call it, waqt uh, badal mm -hmm. Injury time. Yes. We're talking about football. Yes, yeah. Thanks for that analogy because I know a little bit about the business world not too much um and i know how the stock market works and when you use the word resistance mm -hmm. it's funny you use that word because in my mind when you said you need to know when to exit yeah my mind went to holding a stock when you buy a stock exactly. say we bought apple 10 years ago at 10 dollars, and our target was when we get to 100 we sell yeah. okay now it can get to 100 and we chose not to sell. Yeah. And then it goes down to 70, 80, 50, 40, back down to 10. And we're like, but you know what? We, we, should, have we, we should have known when to exit. Exactly. Uh, because that would uh, determine how we will feel mm -hmm. after the fact. Yeah. You know what I always thought? Mm -hmm. I always thought that couples should get counseling when they're engaged. Yes. To tell you what's to come. Yeah. Everyone faces difficulties. Yes. My wife and I, Sarah, faced a lot of difficulties. Yeah. And we look back thinking that we would have loved to have done marriage counseling. Yes. During that one year engagement period. If yes. someone gave us that advice. Yes. We're giving that advice to our younger cousins these days. Yes. Consider consider doing this just so you know what you're about to because it's a whole new world. Yes. And most likely will be the most challenging thing you ever go through in your life. Yes. Yes. And as I told you that people think that when they go marriage therapy or, or marriage counseling, it means that they have a bad relationship. No. no. Yeah, not necessarily. Because it's um, on the contrary. But maybe it's, as you said, it's the way we want to get to know each other more. We want to learn uh, tools, some tools uh, of getting deep communication with each other. So it's not it's it's going to be lovely if we can do it in in the first year of in, engagement as you said or the first year of marriage monthly based 
And after that, we can do it just after three, four hours months and maybe we can reach to a point where we can do it without a marriage counselor yeah. we, we knew the skills we know, we know now how to speak openly and uh, frankly and and know how to express ourselves and absolutely yeah i remember i was at, at a dinner once and uh, two uncles were laughing at someone saying the word uh, couples therapy mm -hmm. And they looked at each other and they're like, huh, this generation, couples therapy, who needs couple therapy? But it shows you that the older generation today laugh at that. Yeah. Uh, so it's 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 interesting how my generation don't laugh at it. Yes. I, 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 I sure, sure and I hope that the, the up and coming generation aren't. But those who are 20, 30 years older than us, it was such taboo during their years. Yes. That uh, today it's something they... Uh, they laugh mm. at, yes. and most of them probably need it. Um, let's. Uh, I faced the same actually by the 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 name of divorce coaching. Yeah, uh, lots of people from the old generation thought that um, a divorce advocate. Do you encourage people to get divorced? Um, people judged me. They thought I'm a feminist. They thought I'm uh, uh, pro divorce, anti marriage. You know, I have to explain what does wow. divorce coaching. You got all of that. Yes, huh? yes. It's you know, and even when I've got my training, um, the, that organization were in the states, and they it was an online actually uh, studying. That course was an online. So. I, I, I remember because I was the only Arab and Muslim uh, lady in that uh, community of, of, of studying. They, they were so amazed that Saudi Arabia got divorced. Do they get divorced in Saudi Arabia? And I said, yes, we're normal people <laughs> and we do get married. And, and of course, we get divorced if it's not working. So it was f for them. It was so weird. They, they've asked lots of questions. Uh, how is that happening? Why w would people choose to go uh, and ask for divorce and it does it take long time in courts like what's going there do you uh, uh, divide assets between you and that so lots of questions yeah, because they have different over there, processes. Yeah, you yeah. split everything don't you yes yeah. yes is there a story from a couple who saw you that stuck with you the most that you know, when you're free time or in your own time, you were like thinking of, of that specific couple. Is, does one come to mind? Mm, I don't think I can share any because I'm so, you know, um, the privacy of my clients is very uh, important. For sure, but without bringing up names. I know, but they might feel that this is the story for us and I don't want to share any of I these totally things. respect that. Totally yeah. respect. Yeah. If you change your mind, let me know. <laughs> okay. عجينه محضره بشغف قوامها خفيف وهش وطعمها ولا اروع Is marriage for everyone? I don't know. Uh, when I saw that, when I saw that question, I, I kept thinking of it a lot. Actually, I supposed it is, but nowadays I can say no. Maybe it's not for everyone. I see people who are just enjoying their life solidly. You, they don't want to have someone. They don't want to have a partner in their life. And even when you see them get married, they act as if they are within a marriage but not within a relationship. They don't have a relationship, even though they have that frame of marriage. So maybe marriage is not for everyone. Yeah. Is social media to blame? There are, there's more content for eyes to look at, more wandering eyes right and left. If you think of a world before YouTube, before Instagram, before Snapchat, mm -hmm. there's less to look at. You're at home with your wife and Saudi channel one and two. Maybe NBC in 94 when it came through. There's more to look at now. Is that? I agree. But at the same time, this is the same reason why some of the good relationships, when they work, they're amazingly working. They're very healthy and very mature because they have all of these, um, you know, all of what you've mentioned. And yet they kept working on their marriage. They kept... Uh, having that strong relationship between each other. So 30 or 40 years ago, we don't have all of these distractions. 
it was very easy to you know nowadays i say for a couple to to get and uh, to go and find time to drink coffee together this is a quality time they have to find time for that they have to do such arrangement and to find such a time 30 or 40 years ago my grandpa and my grandma every day they drink tea together they have nothing to do they read the newspaper so it was so easy for them but it doesn't mean if you compare it this way with all of these distractions these days it's it's making the divorce going up the same things making the good marriages a really good marriages yeah. comparing to those marriages before because it was so it was by default marriage is gonna last by default there's no such distraction there's no such thing like different values we we have to 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 get into deep conversation there's no such things yeah. it's it's very easy to last that divorce and and there's they don't know that terminology about feeling happy being happy with someone yeah, yeah. it's different <laughs> As they say, um, th there isn't one solution, you know, mm -hmm. for everyone's problem, and yeah. more and more so in this uh, in this field. Mm -hmm. um, we got on a call, me and you, a few weeks ago, and yeah. you mentioned something about the guilt that people feel from not working harder. Yes. Where does that come into play? Uh, the, the 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 narrative or the or the idea that you know we did not work harder, so there's a sensation that comes up probably in sessions with you and, and and clients where they feel that if only they tried harder we'd still be together and I, and I probably would imagine that this comes like many months after yeah. the divorce um, when they reflect and yes. start to miss them you know they think they're better yes. without and then they're like no we're not yes yes uh, do, you, do you get that a lot of yeah. Of, uh, yeah. of those who feel like they should have tried harder yes yes lots of that and and the thing is that your mind is gonna be so selective after you just get grounded and and finish all of the um roller coaster that happened during the divorce and after that you will think about your previous life and because it's not there anymore it's something that you're missing your mind is going to be so selective to the nice memories and will bring them all the time and you might feel that you did a mistake leaving that relationship um you know you know when people get uh, get married and this is something that we've been taught from our childhood that people get married and, and lived happily ever after uh, till death uh, do us part do us yeah. part yeah so people have that idea and even in, in the western society they call it the um um, the ghost of uh, till death do us apart. They have that ghost, you know. We didn't, we didn't do that. We've been apart, and we are still alive. So it's not death. So that might be our fault. That might be because we didn't work enough, hard enough, to keep that marriage. Um, you know, people think, and there's are lots of aspect that people consider it's if that guy is respectful if that uh, woman is a um, good mother if if they are you know good people marriage has to last and they don't understand that marriage is requiring lots of things more than being good more than being good person this is something nice but it's not enough not enough in when you're merging two people and ask them to stay together 40 50 years together they have to have a vision they have to and they have to accept each other even though if they've been changing in the future because you know nobody is not changing we all change we all grow we all um, get uh, more wisdom and mature sometimes we do change our values we do change the way we want to live lifestyle and and our dreams so when you have someone that believe in you and just accepting everything that you're going through without accusing you, oh, you've been changed. You're not good for me anymore. Yeah. I admire those who have been together for me 30 too. years, yes. 40 years, 50 years. 
not because they tried to keep it yes. tried to avoid divorce not because of that yeah because they have managed to adjust and adapt with how their spouse has yes. changed yes. over those four or five decades nada it's crazy yes. yes are you the same person you were 10 years ago no no not even two years ago how about yeah. that yeah. so the person who you married 10 years ago is different to the person she or he is today yes and they'll change again it's funny because I got married in 2013 mm -hmm. and in 2023 my wife will tell you that maybe there's some things that I'm similar in but there's also some things that I'm very different in yes she has to still be married to me yes in 2033 if yeah. God gave me the age inshallah I'm going to be different to 2023 and then 2043 and then 2053 you have to be you have to adapt with that person who is changing Forget about every 10 years, you're right. Every yes. two, five years. Yes. I'm going to go through something that's going to change me. Yes. I'm going to go through whether it's a, a crisis yes. or a change of belief or anything that would make me different to the person you fell in love with yeah. and chose as a partner. Yeah. So here, when the marriage that lasts is the marriage that happened between two souls, a sense. That is so deep. Yes. To a sense get merit not the personality from the outside because the personality is changeable the my job is changeable my reaction my um, lots of things i can i can still change lots of things but still me from the inside deep inside my essence would be the same so if that person get married to that essence he would stay with it mm. for 50 60 70 years yeah and it's not easy. Yes, it's, it's not. It's work. Yeah. What's the secret? I asked my aunt who's married 45 years. Mm -hmm. And I asked her specifically because she and her husband, I think, have the best marriage from anyone I know. Okay. She said one word uh, when I asked her what the secret was. I want to ask you what the secret is and let's see how close those two words are. Secret to from every couple you've met and everything you've done, is there a common denominator of something that you need, integral, main thing that you need to have for a marriage to be successful? I think acceptance, fully acceptance. acceptance, yeah. Fully acceptance, you don't want to change the other person, you just accept them the way they are. And you know that acceptance, if you can go there and accept that person, you might stay with that person for so long and you might, reach to the point that you need to get divorced. I felt myself in my story, when I get finally accepting my ex-husband, I decided to get divorced because now I accepted him. I don't want to change him anymore. I've just not, but I know this, what I accepted is not what I want in my life. So when you get to the point that acceptance, fully acceptance, it's either leaving the marriage or staying forever it's a heavy word it's a big word yeah wow when you stop wanting to change them that's when you knew you were done yes yes you're done i'm gonna get to your story in a second my aunt said communication mm. so it's it's all yeah yeah of course yes. and for many people it'll be yes. like honesty communication trust yes. and all that yes but she was like talk I do believe in communication. Actually, I feel so sad for couples nowadays that they like communication. They like fun. They like intimacy in their life. I feel these three, communication, intimacy, and fun, for me, I, I see them very important. Because, you know, they if they stop having fun moments together, doing some activities, doing things away of their own duties that they have to do all the time, um, and intimacy, when I say intimacy, that missing each other, trying to find time for each other, um, communicate about their feeling, listen actively, and just expressing what do they feel without feeling that I have to stuff it up and just just carry on and, and everything is going to be fine. They want one day layers upon layers and accumulation and things just going very you know people who went who go through the or who reach the divorce point 
sometimes they are not surprised actually they saw it coming for years but they didn't imagine that one day we're just gonna wake up can't take that anymore we didn't think that this day is so close we thought that it's okay we're just living our lives taking care of our children and having no fun having no communication but we're fine we're just fine and they think they can carry on this way till one day they just wake up they cannot do it anymore and they don't remember when it reached that point how did yeah. we get here yes yeah. and that's why sometimes in, in my sessions i ask people when do you think your marriage has dead when do you remember and some of them they take long time to think of that question and they said maybe 10 years ago maybe five years ago it's a long time but i've never realized that i was just keep going denial yes denial and maybe a defense mechanism i don't want to face something some big changes now i'm busy i have my study i have my career to build i have young children yeah. what about you mm-hmm. when uh I mean, I obviously want to know what divorce taught you, mm. but, and feel free to say none of your business. <laughs> it's okay. But, but how long were you uh, contemplating or feeling that it was over until you finally took that decision? I think maybe three years, but I, I, I saw it coming from the beginning. So I've been living 17 years, 16 to 17 years in that marriage. You were in the marriage for 16 years? Yes. Yes. How, uh, again, feel free to say none of your business. <laughs> How young were you when you got married? 18, 19. Okay. Yeah. 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 So um, I would, s- Yanya, yeah, I just say that I saw that day coming. It was not a surprise for me, but I kept, I kept working so hard not to reach to that point. Maybe till my kids uh, become older. Maybe um, things are going to change. Maybe till... I started my my self journey of self discovery. I did that in the last three years in my marriage. So I've started therapy, going to courses, started to learn about codependency. I was a codependent person, and if you know what does that word mean, it means um, excessive uh, obsession with uh, approval of others, um, lack of self trust in myself i i wouldn't trust myself even if i appeared so confident to others but i was lacking trust in myself um i was using the relationship to get my value helping them helping people get better and forgetting about me um i can say that the uh, the exaggerating of responsibility for even others action I take everything on my responsibility. My shoulder was so heavy with lots of responsibilities and duties. And I've learned how to let go of that codependency, how to heal from that. And this, that journey led me to knowing who is Nedo. I didn't know her before. You know, I thought I, I know, but I didn't know her. I didn't get to know her in that deep level. What what do I want? What do I like in life? What, what I'm here for? And why? What the hell I'm here with those people and what I'm doing here? This is not the way I wanted to live my life. This is not the place where I can use my f- potentials and, and fully potentials in, in, in life. So, yeah, the decision that was not surprising and I saw it coming in the last 16 years was just able to be done that time when I was ready Um, of course I got the guilt feeling because he was a good guy so just like the 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 public idea that if he's a good guy you don't have the uh, permission to get divorced so it was hard but I was just focusing on do it doing that respectfully Um, not not talking about uh, if all the privacy our privacy in that marriage um having good term with him respecting him at, at the end of the day he is a father of three of my children so i'm respecting him i am i can say now i can 
see him as a brother, as a cousin, some someone like that to me. All of a sudden, I'm going to pretend to be a psychologist okay. and ask you, <laughs> what would Nada today? Mm -hmm. How long ago did you get divorced? Um, six, seven years. Seven years, maybe. And so, a year seven after years. your divorce, you became a divorce coach. Yes, one year. Yes, one year. What would Nada in 2023 mm -hmm. tell Nada in 2015 when she was still in the marriage? Mm. What would that conversation look like? And I ask this question, and I'm going to give you a second yes. to think about the answer. What uh, the reason why I ask the question is because I want a male or a female listening to this right now get the wisdom and the advice. Mm -hmm that you never got at that age yeah. and at that time yeah. that they are perhaps battling today. Yes. What, what, what would you tell yourself of seven or eight years ago when things were at their worst? Yeah, I, I would start with just asking myself to be kind to me the way I'm kind to others. I was just seeing myself in, in at the bottom of the list. I have to make sure that everyone is okay, everyone is good. Till now, I'm caring about others. But I put myself in the front just, just beside them, not in the bottom of that list. And I would, I think I would tell Nada in that time, 2015, just be yourself. Just stop putting all of these masks and and trying to become someone who are who is not you. Just become yourself and, and that's fine. Even if you don't get that approval from everyone around, you just be yourself, be authentic. You felt that you weren't? No, no. I felt that... Uh... We lost the audio at, um, at around 52 minutes in the episode. Uh, and and here we are back in the studio again. Nada was very gracious in accepting my apologies, my shortcomings, my technical issues. And, uh, and, and I honestly take the blame for it because, you know, in, in, in content creation, things go wrong and, and, and definitely something went wrong here whereby we lost the audio. So here we are. Uh, two weeks after I think we shot the first time around, yeah. you can tell that I'm wearing uh, something different. My hair is a little longer. My facial hair needs a shave. Uh, but nevertheless, we are going to pick up okay. Okay. from where we left off. And, um, and we hope uh, that the audience understands. Yeah. I think they will. Yeah. Okay. Um, before the audio cut, we mm -hmm. were talking about being authentic. Yes. And is being authentic something that you would tell your younger self? Mm -hmm. Do you feel that you are authentic today? How about you start there? Are you yes. an authentic person today? Yes, I am. I can say that. Um, first of all, um, I'm living my life according to my own values and beliefs. I allow people in my life to be who they really are instead of what I want them to be. Um, and I have choices. I own my choices and even the consequences belongs to me. It's just just fine. I know that I don't have, um, let's say, fun choices. Mm. Not all of them are fun choices, but I have choices at the end of the day. So phrases like, you know, um, he made me to, they forced me to do this. Uh, I have to, I, I banish them from my vocabulary list and I'm just now choose to say, I choose to do so and so. So yes, I can say this now, my life is authentic because I just own my choices. And if we were to rewind to the days of when you were married, mm -hmm. would you classify those days as ones where you were not in charge of your choices? I thought I have no choices. Mm -hmm. I thought that I have to focus on others. 
But when I've realized that, when I've just realized that, Nada, you need to give, um, you need to take a closer look to yourself and look at yourself. Where are you now? Is this the life you wanted to live? Are you satisfied? Is your needs being met here or you're just acting like a saint or like a, a martyr? And, and back then I thought that was how everyone has to live. Like, you know, sacrificing, um, being a martyr, being a... And, and unfortunately, there is, no, there is no middles for who suffer more by sacrificing himself. Yeah. Yeah, people think that just because they have suffered the most, tolerating suffering mm -hmm. doesn't come with getting brownie points or, as you yeah. said, uh, a prize Meetups, at the end uh, of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. It's funny because I, I've seen that firsthand in my life with someone very close to me mm -hmm. who would almost make it a point to make the people around him know that he is suffering a lot. So you guys need to, in one way or another, be sympathetic towards me. Yes. He was a tough guy, generally. But yeah. with this, he would always play that victim mentality. Yes, yes. And you know, Mo, we, we've been raised to believe that someone else has to come and make us happy. But we are responsible for our own happiness. And till the day come that we learn this, sometimes we learned it the hard way that we are the one who are responsible for our own happiness. So we just kept looking and searching for someone to do that. And, and there's no such a person. Yeah. You'll never find happiness via someone who enters your life. No. You need to be happy. You need to come with it. Exactly. It's almost like a picnic. Yes. You know, you can't go to the park and expect to have sandwiches, fruits, juice, chips there. No, you need to come with it in your basket. Yes. At yes. which point you can then share. I think that was a great yes. analogy. Yes. Um, and then at which point you can share it with your partner. Yes. You cannot just go empty with all your emptiness and say, I want someone to make me whole. Mm. Yes. It's... Uh, it's misconstrued, it's confused, that fact. Mm -hmm. A lot of people tie, especially in our culture. Yes. When are we going to be, ha when are we going to get happy with you? An indication yes. to when are you going to get, just another way to ask, when are you going to get married? Yes. What did divorce teach you on a personal basis? Yeah, you know, divorce was a tough, um, it, it's a bold decision. So when you take that decision, I feel, when I took that decision, I felt that um, I'm really brave. So if it taught me something, it's living courageously and owning my my choices and, and just being responsible about them. You know, people who are going through a divorce, and maybe I felt the same at the beginning that I needed to justify and, and to explain myself a lot about why I'm going through this, what I'm, why I'm having this. No, you don't need to justify yourself and explain it to everyone. You just need to own your choice and your decision and believe in it and, and just be accountable for the consequences that's going to happen and, and be brave. Be brave about that. Yeah. How long was it something that you knew that you wanted to do, but you decided not to do with it and continue a life of unhappiness or a life of wanting out how long were you living that life of continuing to put up with what doesn't make you happy i'm sorry to say that maybe all of my life all of your life yes yes since the beginning of the marriage yeah since the beginning of the marriage from let's say from the beginning that when i felt it's maybe it's not gonna work and and we're not for each other but I kept doing that because of my family. They're happy about this marriage and everyone else is happy, you know, the uh, the other family member. And who am I to just throw in this happiness for them? I have to just carry on. And then one day you decided to put yourself first. Let me say I decided to to give priority to myself. 
without th- without throwing back everyone else but i was just putting myself next to them they deserve to be happy me too i deserve to be happy and you know i was believing the idea that um you know haram um uh, they're all good uh, i have to to just continue this life uh, we are helping each other we but that wasn't helping that was kind of risk rescuing mm-hmm. and i'm not i don't have to rescue someone to feel the value of me i just if if there's someone that i have to rescue it's going to be me yeah it's exhausting by the way if yes yes if you have to rescue people yes yeah yeah you know they talk about selfishness and how selfishness has this negative connotation but i think in relationships it's important to put yourself first mm-hmm. sometimes yes actually it's about knowing that you deserve you you deserve good things in your life and just the way that you love and and care about the other why you're not loving and caring about yourself you know you hear lots of people say that he is not understanding me uh, she's not understandable but they are not uh, getting what i want but when you go on the deeper level and ask that person they don't understand themselves they don't know what they really want they just keep going in that relationship maybe that relationship is going to give them the value or just going to give them um the meaning of their life but relationship doesn't give us the meaning we have to give the meaning to our relationship mm-hmm. well said well said um as far as your practice is concerned mm-hmm. um you know again it's it's about helping people who are either going through a tough time or who have just gotten divorce um what kind of results do you feel that your practice has achieved mm-hmm. in the field in the market if you can call it that um for divorces yeah getting back then maybe to 2018 when i've just started this i felt how i'm going to represent myself how i'm going to introduce this um to our uh, conservative culture uh, talking about divorce but and i've i've remember that uh, 2018 i've started a uh, divorce support group for men and women who are going through divorce and that was the first time when i just gather uh men and women and just let them talk about their experiences so they share their stories and they feel that they are not alone in this uh path um i remember that the feedback was really great nowadays i have um, still i have divorce support group that offsite but i have also online and those the online are having people from kuwait oman qatar bahrain emirates i have people from algeria um so all around you know the arab countries that people when they hear about this they participate sometimes they prefer the online one because they can keep their camera off they can just come with any name we we ask them to just provide yourself with a nickname or only your first name you don't have Anonymous, to share yeah. yeah you don't have to share anything private just share what you've done to get out of that. that and that was really lovely because everyone sees and feels that i'm not alone in this oh they've shared the same and 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 she has the same feeling that i've got before and it's really it's really helping yeah. and i wrote a book uh, about divorce it's called divorce in peace at talaq bi salam and remember i told you that most of the books have been read um it's about uh it's it has been written by divorce coaches so i've decided that maybe i can't reach to everyone and i can't do more sessions or but i can write a book and and just leave it there and it's like um it works like a guidance to people just once they decide about divorce so what is the road map till the day they feel that they're they've been healed from their story. So do you advise those who have come in for therapy and sessions to then eventually read the book? Yeah, they can they can read the book without sessions, without even doing okay. any therapy or sessions. It's it's helping them. It tells them what emotions they are going to face, how to talk to their kids, how to talk to their family, what's how how 
divorce is going to affect their work and their business if they have um, things like, you know, uh, what are your reasons behind divorce? Uh, are, are they conscious or unconscious reasons? Maybe, um, maybe you spend more time thinking about that. Is it a great divorce or a very early divorce? Great divorce, we, we talked about divorce when it happened after 30. Um, it, it comes from the gray hair, you know, when people over 50, they go through divorce. Sometimes they feel it's too late why we are going to have divorce. But you see it nowadays. It's 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 common. Common, yeah. Yeah. So it, it says a lot about why have you maybe waited all of that time and what was the advantages and disadvantages and both, why, both ways about the early divorce. Yeah. I've heard of people getting divorced like three or four months into the marriage. Yeah. What? What? How do you? Uh, yeah, yeah, Respond that. to to that. Is, is it? Yeah, yeah. I, I've seen people like yeah. that, and, and maybe less than one month sometimes. Wow. It happened. Yeah. Wow. And I think they sometimes they are so sad and angry because they they haven't lived the dream yet. They they've just caught it, and then they've it it's vanished from their hands. So they feel very angry sometimes, but they have their definitely they have their own reasons why it, they have to end it that early um yeah some some stories are very uh short some are very long so yeah yeah they come in all shapes and sizes <laughs> exactly um do you have a sour taste in your mouth when you think of marriage would you marry again I did. <laughs> oh, you, you did get married. I did. I did that so no four sour years taste. ago. No, no. And you know, this is very funny because I remember a client came to me and I was pregnant that time, two years ago. And when she saw me, she said, are you the divorce coach? I said, yes, this is me, the divorce coach. Because they think that I'm a divorce coach. Maybe I'm against marriage, but no, no. And actually, this is what I'm doing with my clients. My job is not about ending their marriages my job is coming in the loop you know that loop between the ending and the new beginning i help them navigate that loop and to discover who they really are what do they want from their life and how can they reach to the point where they feel that this is the life they deserve living yeah, yeah it's misunderstood uh, for, for people who think that your job is to encourage divorce mm -hmm. No, your your job is is to show them the way if that is the best way forward. Yes. Your job is to help them after the fact. Yes. Yes. And help them if they're in the middle of the storm. Yeah. And and sometimes you will advise maybe divorce coaches is, is it gives is too negative of a connotation for your title. I mean yeah. it could be divorce coach slash relationship coach yes yes because if i'm or we can call it transition coach or for example recovery and transition yeah. um it helps sometimes yes but i i remember that when i was studying this I, i've been asking my mentor and my, my coach can we just change the word divorce it's it's ugly i don't want to, yeah. to use that it's word, word and yeah. yeah it's it's really heavy and i i don't want to introduce myself saying the d word the everywhere d word, yeah. even though yeah. even couples don't refer to it yes they refer yes. to it like as you would a swear word yes uh, with, with its first letter yeah so but she told me that you have to be clear mm. everyone that goes through there they need to know that you are there with that name with that title and yeah, I think I can see that point. Yeah. Yes. Can something be done earlier in life to help people when they do reach marriage? I mean, someone once, I told someone once that it's important for every couple to do marriage therapy. Mm -hmm. Every couple should do marriage therapy. And then that person's response was, they sh every couple should do marriage therapy before they get married. But I'm thinking earlier on in life, in school, mm -hmm. nothing's nothing's being taught about no. uh, what's to come in marriage, no. and and um, and what goes into it, and the sacrifices and the consideration, and uh, it not being about you anymore. 
because you live this whole life where it's just about you, the individual. Yes. And then before you know it, you're asked to share that life with someone. And then more people join that picture. Is this something that could be taught in the schooling or university levels, would you say? Yeah. What I believe is that school, schools have done everything to make us unqualified for marriage. This is my opinion. Schools were were focusing on our logic mind, our task focused mind. You know, we have two systems when when it comes to our brain and how we function and think. We have the task oriented mind and the social mind. The school is all about the task oriented mind. It's about logic, it's about analysis, it's about critical thinking, equations, procedures, possibilities, things like that. But when it comes to social mind, it's about listening, really listening. I'm listening to you not to be defensive or to prepare my answer or to thinking what I'm going to say after you finished your sentence. No, I'm just really listening. I'm empathizing with you. Um, I validate your feeling. I, I let you feel and I let myself, I allow myself to feel. Feel the feelings. Exactly. Yeah. Just feel the feeling and have on your feeling. And it's okay to have such feelings. Even people sometimes they dis- describe the feelings, negative feelings. There's no such negative or positive feelings. Feelings are just feelings and you need to live them. So if we just focus on emotional intelligence, how to how we learn to soothe ourselves, how, how we learn to soothe ourselves when we get uh, upset and how we um, do, let's say, resetting our triggers and, 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 and do reprogramming our triggers. So we can do lots of things like that. If we've been learning that instead of chemistry, physics and biology, and you know, all of these subjects that we are not using in our life, if we've been learned all of these things about emotional intelligence, we could be doing better in our marriages. Because you cannot, you know, and, and there's something else that we respect the, uh, the logical mind more than what we do with the emotional mind. We we tend to invalidate our emotions. We tend to, you know, when someone is acting emotional, we say drama queen, she's sensitive and things like that. We, we just invalidate that and make them feel as if they are less, you know, while they're having that feelings and emotion. Um, and you cannot use the, the both two system at the same time. If you're if you're focusing on, on sol- solving a problem, you cannot listen and empathize and, and be there because mm-hmm. you're so occupied with how to solve this. And that will happen between couples all the time. She's coming, venting, telling him something that annoyed her or best her off, and he's trying to fix it or to solve the problem or and she just needs him to listen. Just all she needs is just listen to me, validate my feelings, and maybe we will come together with a solution. But yeah. Yeah, being there is half the battle. Yes. It shows support, it shows you care. Yeah. And, um, and not many have figured that out. Mm-hmm. Hardest thing that you've ever had to face in your life? Mm. Um, I thought divorce is the hardest thing that I've ever had since 2020 came. In 2020, um, I've been, my son, who was 14 years old back then, um, suffered from a headache, a severe headache, and it has been continuing for maybe weeks. And then we've discovered that he has a brain tumor. And within four days, four shocking days, a surgery has been scheduled. And they've told me that this surgery is critical, but very urgent, and it has to be done. And I remember just going through all of that. And then I've learned that uh, that tumor was a very ferocious, uh, malignant tumor. And we went through the chemo, radiotherapy, all of this conventional treatment. And I remember was 
even though that was very hard thing that I've, I've been through it, but I was optimistic. I felt that we're gonna go through this. We're gonna just pass it and one day he will be fine. And till the day of July 7th, so it's just seven months during that treatment. And then in July 7th, um, his oncologist uh, met me and told me that we're sorry, mom, the conventional treatment is failing and your son but this is not responding to that treatment anymore and we have to put him on palliative. And I didn't know what the palliative word does mean in that time. Please tell us what that means. It means that when someone has, uh, Yanni, you can say there's nothing you can do with that person. You just give him painkiller till he die. So there's, there's nothing they can do with that. And he told me that uh, your son have few months to live. And I remember how devastated I was. That was the worst day in my life. I can't imagine there's worse than that. And I remember that um, getting back home and, and cried, maybe from 1 p.m. till, till the, the other day. So I was crying for 12, 13 hours continuously. And I, I didn't want to think. And I've been asked, I, I, you know, he, my husband was asking me and everybody, what are you going to do? I said, I don't know. I'm just going to cry today. And tomorrow is another day. I will wake up and figure out what I have to do. One day at a time. Yeah. And I remember the other day I just waked up. Um, I just woke up and, and tried to um, send his document abroad and find uh, any other hospital institute. And unfortunately, that time where COVID-19 and Corona and, and border was closed and there's no flights and, and no one can uh, and there's no exceptions. And when I got exceptions, they told me uh, um, the treatment that you've been having here is the same treatment that you're going to have there. So there's nothing we can do, um, you know. The thing that I, I remember that time that I felt I've been betrayed by the medical system because I believed in the conventional treatment. I believed that it could help. And when they've just told me it fails and and he's not responding to that anymore, I felt I've been betrayed. Um, um, I, I, how I can trust? I, I, I said yes. I signed lots of very scary documents talking about the side effects of chemotherapy and radiotherapy. I've signed all of these documents to, to now to come to tell me that it failed. So why, why, why did I just let him do all of that? And then we just turn into the holistic approach and going, I, I just put him into um, nutrition, dietary, uh, a very specific nutrition and, and dietary and I've done everything you can imagine, hypnosis, um, and of course, the spiritual aspect, sadaqa, dua, Quran, and all of that. And, and miracles are there. Just three months later, his uh, results were showing us that the, there's reduction in the spread of the cancer, and, and he's doing well. And um, till now, you ask me, how has that happened? what this exact treatment that you did is it the nutrition is it the is it the quran is it the, i don't know it's 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 uh, a package of all and i think the turning point was when i reached to i remember that one day i wake up finding um, another rejection letter from a hospital in, in Texas, in, in United States. And, but I felt that for the first time in that dilemma, I'm just going to take life as it is. I'm just going to surrender if God knows, if he knows that this person has to live, he's going to live. If not, so it's not. And yeah, he's doing well now. Alhamdulillah, he's 17, 18 almost, and he's doing very well. How long ago was it when they told you that he has a few months to live? They've told me that in July 
2020. And in November, we've, we've started to see the results coming better. And, and even the oncologist, the, the other one in, in Riyadh, because we've been between Jeddah and Riyadh, you know, for the treatment. And that one in Riyadh called me one Friday morning. And he said, I know it's weekend. I'm, I'm not in the hospital, but I cannot wait till I tell you what I've been seeing in his uh, results. It's a miracle. SubhanAllah. Yes. That's amazing story. Yeah. And that story taught me that miracles exist. They do. Yeah. They do. Yes. Um, prayers are are answered if yes. you're persistent. And if you yeah. do well, I think uh, it's a good way to have your prayers answered. And your prayers were answered. Yeah. Uh, I can't imagine what you were going through. I cannot imagine what you're going through. I'm a father of three. Mm-hmm. So to hear that you had to hear that your son has a few months to live. I mean, where do you, yes. how do you sleep? You, it's the last thing on your mind before you sleep. It's the first thing on your mind when you wake up. That is exactly. if you sleep. Exactly. What stops people from achieving their goals in life? I think it's comparing themselves to others because, you know, we are unique. Every one of us is unique having different background, different um, capacity and, and ability. So when we used to compare ourselves to others and nowadays with the social media and all of that, it's, it's very, um, you know, compelling to just where we have to go and, and, and see what others in my field have been doing so far and what achievements that I have to do. And and we have that, you know, um, the prospect, which is very perfectionist um, picture of where we want to see ourselves. And sometimes that picture is not realistic at all. It has nothing about uh, me as human. Sometimes I get tired. Sometimes I get uh, uh, just fed up from some of my responsibilities and my duties. And, and it's it's going to be very helpful if we just take life easier and we just, you know, get content where with where we are right now and just believe that everything is happening with the right pace in the right time. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm not being so obsessive, right? Yes. Uh, yes. About things, especially those that you cannot control. Yeah. Be it situations or people. Yes, yes. And obsessive about some of our objectives because sometimes we need to change them. Yeah, let go of some of them. And, and, and to know that not all the objective that we have just drawn for ourselves, it's valid and has to be there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want you to leave me with one piece of advice. I would say take life as it is. Just accept life the way it is. If you're going through tough times, believe in yourself that you're going to navigate it. If you're going in very good time, just enjoy it. Enjoy it while it lasts. Just go with the waves of your life. Surrender and just accept it and and just just live the moment and be happy it was tom hanks on an instagram reel that just went viral and keeps going viral Mm -hmm. and he talks about how this too shall pass he kept saying that you're going through a hard time this too shall pass you are bored at work this too shall pass yes you are having a good time yes this too shall pass yes yes nothing's forever yes that's what i keep telling my son he's like nothing i'm like not even bacteria yeah nothing yes. is forever exactly um yeah just because you're going through something doesn't mean that you're going to be going through it for the rest of your life and Definitely. fortunately same goes for the happy times exactly yeah, yeah. If, uh, ride the wave as you say yes okay and um and honestly once again i really really do appreciate you coming on for the second time and uh and being part of the mojo thank you thank you more for having me in that show my pleasure thanks Nada. okay welcome